hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making some chopsticks. Well, I recently saw in a catalog that one of the stores that I frequent carries a jig for making chopsticks. And I thought, hey, wouldn't that be cool to do that on the show? So I looked into the price of the jig. <clears throat> Once I picked myself up off the floor after seeing the price, I started thinking, do we really need a jig here or can we just do it by hand? And that's what today's show is all about. We're going to be making a set of chopsticks. And other than the table saw to cut the initial stock, all of the work will be done by hand using simple tools like some carving knives and uh, a block plane. So what I've done is I've taken some maple and I've cut it to be 5 30 seconds um, by 5 30 seconds and 10 inches long. So when doing research for this project, I noticed or found that there's many different types of chopsticks. Um, the Chinese chopsticks are very different from the Japanese, which are very different from the um, Vietnam and that sort of thing. Now, is that true? I don't know. I, I guess I read it on the internet, so it must be, right? Isn't what they say? I don't care about all that stuff. We're just here to have some fun and make a set of chopsticks. So with the stock roughed out, let's head over to the bench. Well, I've got the stock and we're just going to rough mark this out. And we want roughly the center here of each one of these sides, just like this. You can see here that we're not really measuring. We're just kind of going by eye. And I'm using my finger on the side there to stop it from from going anywhere. So we're going to take this most of the way up at the center point, just like this. And then on the end, we're going to join those marks together to give us a cross section. And these are basically just some layout lines to help us. So you can see there we've got the cross and then we've got these lines here. This will be our handle end. The lines here, that will be our eating end. So we're going to come down about four inches here, just like that. And that will be the line for where our taper is going to start on our project. And the object is that we want to try to get that taper to be an octagon shape. So the first thing that we're going to do is from that line, we are going to very carefully with our block plane, just taking off little slivers, we're going to start trying to get our octagon shape. And we'll carefully go at each corner here. And you can see I'm taking off very little. I'm using my thumb at this end as a stop right there so that the plane can't go back any further. And you can see that I'm also using this plane at an angle. I'm skewing the blade onto the stock, which really helps the blade to, to act or to, to cut a little easier. So we're going to keep an eye on those layout lines and taper this down. There really is no magical formula for this as far as how far to taper it. You just want to taper it down until you get it to an octagon point. Now I just keep rotating this by 90 degree turns and we'll just check it. We're getting an octagon here. We're a little off on some points, but that's okay. We're going to continue working on this now until from this four inch mark all the way down, 
we've got a nice taper and uh, it's roughly octagon shape. Now you can see that this isn't exactly a fast process, but are we in a hurry? I don't think so. We'll just keep working it and milling it down until we're happy with it. Now you'll have to keep in mind as you're tapering this down, you will end up with a square at this end. So you'll have to taper down the flat surfaces as well. So just keep an eye on it at the end here and you'll be able to see what it is that needs more tweaking or less or that sort of thing. So I'm just gonna keep working at this and hopefully soon we're going to have the shape that we want. Now you can see there that we're getting the taper that we want. I'm getting a little bit of chatter here at the end which is causing some tear out but I think that's mostly because it's not supported on the bench. So with a little extra support and a little more care, we can eliminate that chatter and get the clean lines that we want. So continue to work on this taper until you get it the way that you want it and the diameter at the end is the diameter that you want. There really is no secret formula to this. It's a personal preference thing. Well now that we have the taper and the octagon the way we want, I'm going to use the block plane very light passes and take off the actual octagon shape so that it becomes rounded as it tapers down to the end. And once you're happy with the taper and the shape of that, repeat the process on your second chopstick. Now you guys don't need a video of me planing away here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just make this other one or taper it and then uh, I'll come back and see ya. Well, once you're done the shaping of the business end of the chopstick and you're happy with it, just give it a nice sanding here. Don't bother sanding the handle as of yet because we haven't done anything with it. So you just want a light sanding. Don't worry about if these chopsticks are uniform or perfect as far as exactly like the other one. They're not meant to be. These are a gift. They're supposed to look handmade and that's what we want. So. I'm going to finish sanding this and once we get that done, we're going to turn our attention to the handles of the chopsticks. Well, the next thing that I want to do is we want to chamfer the end of our handle of our chopstick. And that's really no big deal. Just place it against the edge of your bench and roughly at a 45, still with your um, block plane kind of skewing the edge, we'll just trim off a little chamfer on each edge. It doesn't take a lot. If your blade is sharp, it should be no trouble whatsoever. And it's a little uneven. There we go, we'll just straighten it out a bit. 
And again, don't forget, you're not looking to make make these things look store-bought or professional. You're looking to make them homemade. So that is a nice little chamfer there. We'll repeat it on the other one, as you can see I've already done. And our chopsticks are really starting to take shape. The next thing that we want to do is we're gonna do a little bit of a decorative thing in the handles here. So what I would like to do is just place a mark, line up the ends, and we'll take my pencil, maybe, there we go. And we're just gonna line up some score marks here. So we're just gonna do this. I think I like one there, one there, and maybe one there. And then we'll transfer those marks all the way around, just like this. And you can see exactly how technical this is. I mean, I'm just scribbling this on here. It's not even, I'm not even measuring. I'm just going by eye now just like we did with the center line. This is what I love about this project. You don't have to have all kinds of fancy measuring tools. You know, you don't have to have any kind of fancy rulers. In fact, you don't have to have any rulers at all. I measured down the four inches from the end, but I mean, you could eyeball that, right? Okay, so what do we do with these marks now? Well, now I want to get a little carving knife. Well, all I want to do here, and it's nothing special, just outside of each line, I'm gonna come in kind of on a 45 degree angle, and I'm just gonna take a little notch, a little chip out of each one of those corners. We're not trying to be fancy, we're not trying to, you know, <laughs> we're not carving a claw here, we're just taking little chips out, just like this. And we're going to do that on the corner at each one of these lines. Now once we get all of them done, we'll just give them a light sanding. You don't want to go too crazy on it, but we will erase our pencil mark and give our handles a sanding from there. Well, while these are really nothing special, I have to say that I'm quite pleased with how they turned out. Um, truth be told, this is my first attempt at this, so I think the first set I've ever made looks kind of cool. Now, <clears throat> There's other things you could do, of course. I considered burning a ring around each section where I, uh, where I carved that, and I might just do that. That could be kind of cool. Um, a finish on these. I would suggest a tongue oil. If you get 100% pure tongue oil, give it a good coating, rough it up with some steel wool when that dries, and then another coating, and you know, that sort of thing. Um, these would last an extremely long time. I also got to wondering exactly how long it would take me to make a set from beginning to end without screwing around and stopping and doing all this stuff like uh, filming and all that. So what I want to do is I want to set up the camera. We're going to fast forward it so that we can see how long it takes. And I'm going to start a set of these um, from beginning to end, not including roughing out the stock, and let's just see how long it takes me.
And there you have it. <clears throat> About 19 minutes and 20 seconds to make a set. And that was just my second set. And I'm sure that I would get faster as I go along. Guys, these are a lot of fun. I know it just seems simple to have some sticks and use a block plane to round off the ends and taper it. And then a the little bit of carving there and that they have this rustic quality that I really love. That handmade quality where not everything is so perfect. In fact, there's quite a few imperfections in these and that is exactly what I love about them. It doesn't take long to make these and whip these up. And as I said, the more you do, the faster you'll get. Could you rig up a jig to make these and produce them on, on a more mass production kind of thing? Sure you could. Uh, but why would you want to at this point? It's a lot of fun just to have a few hand tools and to make these. If you're one of those woodworkers that you know, you due to circumstances beyond your control, you had to move into an apartment and you no longer have the means to run your power tools and that sort of thing. You can very easily cut with a, a small saw, quarter inch by quarter inch or five thirty seconds by five thirty seconds stock. And what noise does a hand plane and a carving chip knife make? It makes nothing plus hand sanding. So you could still get some serious woodworking fixes in while making some great gifts for your family and friends. No excuses, guys. No excuses. These are a lot of fun. Make some for yourself. Make some for your friends. Make some for your family. Make some for your next get together and have a little bit of fun and eat with chopsticks. Guys, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Click the bell so you don't miss the notifications of future shows. I hope you've enjoyed the program. I hope you enjoyed the project. And I also hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.